A herniated disc can cause back pain that leaves you unable to do normal things like stand as long as you want, exercise without paying for it the next day, or be able to get a good night's sleep. And if the pain is severe in your back, it's easy to resort to taking medications, getting injections from the doctor's office, or even think about getting a surgery for this problem. But in most herniated disc cases, you can get relief pretty quickly if you do the right things. In this video, I'm going to show you seven quick and natural pain relief tips for a herniated disc. Tip number one is to use a back brace like this one. This is one of my favorite braces from Sparthos. There's a link to it in the description below if you want to grab one from Amazon. And wearing a back brace like this, this is a very simple, straightforward back brace, which you can usually find these at drug stores, at uh, anywhere where there's a pharmacy section in a grocery store. And they have two layers of straps. So let me get this on for you so you can see. It's got the first thick layer. And you just put this on snugly and the idea is that it's going to give you some compression which takes some pressure off your herniated disc. It's got these two straps in the back that you're gonna wrap around the front to cinch it down even more. So you go around this way and then around this way. And now I've got some added compression. This is something that you're gonna to wanna to have on if you're gonna be on your feet all day and you just want that extra support. It limits you from twisting too much, which is helpful for your disc problem. But you don't wanna rely on this in the long term. You need to make sure that you treat the root of the problem, which is usually getting strong in your abs. But for getting that quick relief, a brace like this that's 30 bucks, 20 bucks even in some cases, um, a very affordable way to get pain relief and it's all natural. You don't have to take any medications, have any procedures done. Now this isn't gonna take away the pain completely likely, but it can take the edge off very often, at least enough for you to get back to doing some of the things that you need to do. Number two is getting some rest. A lot of people don't stop. They kind of push through activities and what they don't realize is the more time you're on your feet, that's putting pressure through the vertebrae of your spine and through the discs of your back. And so if you have a herniated disc, you need to take pressure off. So lying down is one option. If you go lie down on a bed or you lie, lie down on a couch, but even just reclining is helpful. And if you don't have a recliner, even just sitting down and resting your back against a backrest or a wall or somewhere where you can just lean on something, that helps to take pressure off your disc. A goal that you should have right now is to think about how much time percentage wise you're spending on your feet. You're spending upright, using your own muscles to balance yourself, to stand, to sit even, versus how much time you're reclined or lying down. You need to shift that percentage over to where you're lying down, reclined more so that you can allow that disc to heal rather than being upright and moving around. Now you can't take it to the extreme and say, I'm gonna lie down 100% of the time because that's also bad. You do need to move around, but the best way to implement this is to take breaks. If you're at home, for instance, and you're doing chores, maybe it's the weekend or you're not at work or you're just home for whatever reason, spend some time doing something on your feet, like cooking a meal and then go sit down, recline for a while, maybe even lie down and then get back up and go do that thing. If you work in spurts like this, you should be able to mitigate that back pain. In other words, control it so that it doesn't get so intense because when people run into problems is when they're on their feet continuously for a long period of time for more than an hour two three four hours then their back will hurt for a long time afterwards it'll hurt for the rest of the day into the next day potentially even days on end your herniated disc needs to be decompressed and if you just get off your feet rest recline or lie down, you're doing it a lot of good and you can get some pretty quick relief doing that. Doing this knees to chest exercise can take pressure off your back. If you just lie down on your back, you can use a pillow or not, whatever's comfortable for you, and pull your knees into your chest, that decompresses your spine. You can feel the, the pressure coming off your back when you do this. And for whatever reason, you can't do this on your back, it might hurt you to hold your legs up. You can do this on your side as well. You would just turn on your side that you are comfortable and pull your knees up to your chest as much as you can comfortably pull up. You don't have to force them up, but just rest in this position. You can get, even get your head and shoulders down towards your legs and just rest in this position. When you go lie down to rest, if you get into this position to take pressure off your back and you're not upright, they're knocking out two birds of one stone. If you want to take it up another notch, something you can do is use your abdominal muscles because if you're on your back right here 
and you flatten out your back to suck in your abs while you do the knees to chest thing. So if you pulling your abs right here, it's gonna feel like you're getting a bit of a workout, but it shouldn't bother your back. If you have a herniated disc, this is gonna feel good on you. Suck in your abs while pulling in your knees and you're taking even more pressure off your disc. You're, you're gonna get tired, but that's a good thing because you probably need ab strength. So you may not be able to last very long. If you can hold it for 10, 20 or 30 seconds like this, that's excellent. Another way to take pressure off is kind of a knees to chest, but it's a, it's a little bit different. You're gonna be on your hands and knees and you're gonna rock back just like this. I call this a hand to heel rock. When you rock your bottom back towards your feet like this, you bend your back, you open up the, the vertebrae back here, which opens up the disc, it takes pressure off the disc and it allows you to decompress the discs to give, to give it some space to breathe, some space to heal really. And some people will stretch in this position and they're essentially doing a knees to chest type motion here. But what I like to do, where, where I make this a little bit different, is by sucking in your abs, doing this motion right here, which makes you kind of arc your back. It usually feels great on somebody who has a herniated disc problem. Holding your abs in and then sitting back, you can put a big stretch on your lower back, which is usually what's needed in order to open up the discs back there and give them space to heal. And once you come up to the top, relax your abs and then suck in your abs again like you're sucking in your belly button and rock backwards. Doing this motion, 10 to 30 reps or even more reps, 50 reps, every two to three hours and accumulating hundreds of reps. If you can get up to 200 or, or more reps of just sitting back and forth like that, you can really begin to control that back pain so that your disc can begin to heal. One of the problems for people suffering with a herniated disc is sleeping. So for number five, if you can sleep in the fetal position or at least a semi-fetal position, and I showed you the knees to chest, so it's kind of the same idea, but you don't have to be as aggressive. If you at least get in a partial knees to chest position, a fetal position here, then you're taking pressure off your spine. If you need to put a pillow between your knees, sometimes that makes it more comfortable. Definitely pillow under your head if you need to. But so many people try to sleep flat on their back like this and it's usually not a good idea if you have a herniated disc because chances are you have a muscle imbalance around your lower back, your spine, and it's pulling your back into an arced position which is adding compression when you lie down on your back like this. So you need to take the pressure off and getting onto your side is much better for you. And generally the closer your knees are to your chest, the more pressure you're gonna take off your back. Now you have to realize that if you have a herniated disc and it's very irritated right now, like it's, it's bothering you, your back's hurting, sleeping in this position may not fully take away the pain, it may just take the edge off, but you need to make sure that you're doing things during the day, like using the brace or doing some of those exercises and stretches that I just showed you, so that you can allow that disc to heal so that when you get to sleeping, when you go lie down, it's not so irritated and you're able to sleep more comfortably. In very few circumstances is your mattress a problem or the pillow a problem. That can be part of the problem, but it's usually a small part of the problem. And the bigger concern is making sure that you take enough pressure off your disc throughout the day by doing these stretches and exercises so that you can allow it to heal so that when you get to bed, it's not so irritated and it won't wake you up. The number six quick and natural pain relief tip is hanging. Now there's several ways to do this. Um, the easiest way doing it upright would you need a piece of equipment to do any of these hanging activities by the way um, and I have this um, pull-up bar and dip station that I really love but using this position right here where you can rest your elbows here and just rest on your elbows and let your legs dangle that takes pressure off your lower back now my feet are still touching the ground here but my body's hanging most of my body weight here is hanging through my elbows so the weight of my legs is taking pressure off my lower back and i can feel a stretch happening in my lower back here another option is to hang from the dip position right here which is going to be a little more strenuous because you have to have some upper body strength but this also takes pressure off my back and then hanging from the pull-up bar is also great to do. Now this is a little bit low for me, so you know, my feet are on the ground and I'm practically going down to my knees. I can adjust this up higher and hang my full body weight, but if you're not strong enough to hang from your hands with your full body weight, that's fine. Keep your feet on the ground and just hang from right there and let your body weight kind of gradually add on to your low back there. 
that's another way to do it. If you can access a pull-up bar at the gym, or maybe you own a device like this, or if you have one of those in the door frame pull-up bars, you could use those too. Just be careful, make sure that you have a secure wall, one that you really trust, and be safe. Don't fall off that, that thing. I've seen that happen too many times. And yet another way you can hang and get decompression going through your back is to use an inversion table like this one. Now this particular one by Innova, I really like. It's a, it's a very sturdy build. You can check out a link in the description to get one of these on Amazon or, or check it out and see if it's, it's something that interests you. And this one's set to stop at certain points so that you're not going completely vertical. However, this one right now is set up to go completely vertical. I can adjust it, but just wanted to show you how you can go all the way upside down. Now you can just lie a little past horizontal in this position and already begin to feel some decompression going through your lower back. But if you decide to go even further, it definitely adds more decompression. And if you can hang here for 10 minutes, at least five minutes, if you can get it to 15 minutes, even better. It just takes pressure off your disc and allows you to feel some comfort, some quick relief. And it's natural, you're not putting anything in your body, of course. You just have to commit the time to doing this and be comfortable with, with any blood rushing to your head. At this position, I, I feel slight pressure in my head, but it's very, extremely mild. Nothing that I would get concerned about. Now, I don't do vertical completely upside down very well. I'm gonna show you how much I can take. So right here, the pressure starting to build up a good amount but I'm still okay. But if I go all the way vertical, I mean, it feels like you're past vertical sometimes. That'd be about right here. I'm only gonna be able to take this for a couple of minutes. I feel the drainage going into my nose. This is too extreme. It's more uncomfortable than anything else. But at this angle right here, you can get quite a bit of decompression going. The seventh natural pain relief tip is using a massage gun like this on the back muscles around your spine. So this is one of my favorite massage guns by Toloco. If you wanna get your own massage gun, they've already updated it. This is the older version, um, but they, they make a good massage gun. The battery lasts a long time. I can go on and on about this. Go check it out in the link in the description below if you wanna get one. Um, but you would turn on the massage gun, of course. There it goes. And you don't wanna put it directly on the spine. You will need to put it to the muscles that are on the side. And ideally you wanna have somebody else doing this for you so that you can get back there. But you can do this on your own, just like I am right now. It feels great, I love this. And just go off to the side rather than directly down the middle. And if you can reach across to, I'm on the right side of my lower back right now, because I'm using my right hand, I have the flexibility to get to my left side, but if you can't reach back there, then switch hands or get some help. Have a loved one or a family member, a friend, somebody around who can do this on your back and you only need a few minutes, enough time for those muscles to relax because in a herniated disc problem, those back muscles that you're on with this massage gun, they get shortened, they get overworked and they start to shorten and they, they add compression to your disc. And so if you do this right here, you can instantly melt away some of that tension and feel tremendously better in your lower back. Now I often get asked, well, can I go get a professional massage? And absolutely, you can definitely do that. You know, these things will run you anywhere from 50 to $100. Some of them are $200 and up. There's a big range depending on, on which gun you get. But if you wanted to go get a massage, of course it's gonna be like 50 to $100 per massage session, um, but that might be better for you. I think that for this kind of a problem, uh, going to go see a, a masseuse, a professional massage, therapist is very beneficial. So go make an appointment if you're thinking about it already. Just tell them to work on your back muscles and you likely need to free up some thigh muscles and hip muscles as well. If you can get those loosened up, you're probably gonna feel tremendously better. The one exception is if you're having nerve problems in addition to your herniated disc issue. Like if you're having sciatica pain and you feel any numbness or tingling anywhere, if you've lost a, a strength in a weird way on just one leg, like you have foot drop, like your, your foot slaps when you walk or you can't pick up your toes very well when you go up and down like this, that's a sign that your nerve is severely involved, it would be, maybe because of your herniated disc, and getting a massage or using a massage gun like this may not be the best thing for you at that moment. But if you don't have any of those problems, then go for it, you can use a massage gun, go set up a, a massage appointment and get those muscles loosened up. 
that these seven quick and natural pain relief tips are only designed to get you short-term relief, but fixing the long-term problem is a whole different ballgame. Once you've got the pain under control, you've got to address the root muscle imbalance, which is usually having weak abdominals, and weak glutes can also be a part of this issue. You have to be sure to get those muscles stronger safely and you have to progress in a way that doesn't bother your back, doesn't create a, a worse herniated disc. And eventually you need to do some sort of weightlifting program so that you can keep that disc healthy because it will respond to weights as long as you do it gradually and with good form and technique. We talk about how to address the root of the problem in our program called the 28 Day Back Health and Wellness Boost Program. You can find out more details about it in the description below. That program is designed to take you through 28 days of exercising appropriately, even lifting weights appropriately, and making sure to take pressure off your herniated disc problem. Hey, if you thought this video was helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our helpful videos that we post every single week. And please share this with somebody you think needs to hear this so they can begin to get some quick relief for their herniated disc problem. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.